Hello and welcome to this breakout session on what's new with SUSE and IBM Z16. Next slide please Mike. So we're going to start where everything starts today, that's digital transformation. We'll then look at three of the main focus areas for IBM's new mainframe, the Z16, which is about AI, about security, and about modernizing applications with hybrid cloud. So if you can move on to the next slide. My name is Adam Jollins, and I work for IBM in the Z Systems and Linux One team. And together with my colleague, Mike Friesenegger from SUSE, we're really excited to be here to talk with you about the new IBM Z16 and how SUSE is supporting its new capabilities. Let's move on to the next slide. The past several years have been a time of extraordinary challenges and changes in the world around us, not only from a personal level, but for businesses as well. Even prior to the pandemic, businesses across all industries have started to embark on the journey to digitally transforming their organizations. So next slide. But with the pandemic, that digital transformation really has accelerated. It's gone with, to customers, employees suddenly having to rely on remote and online services, working from home and expecting fast, personalized 24 by seven service. And in addition to the rate and pace of digital transformation accelerating, the importance of digital transformation within businesses is also increasing. And I've heard it said that the uh, digital transformation, what would have taken 10 years, uh, is now being done in a year or two. So it really is moving fast. Now against this backdrop and listening to our clients, we've heard three common themes that are needed to help with that digital transformation. Firstly, it's artificial intelligence or AI. How do we leverage the potential of AI across the business, not only from a core transactional perspective, but also from an operations perspective? Second is cyber attacks are also increasing as well. And this is around data at rest, data in motion, data at use, and also moving on to talk about the potential threats in the future from quantum computing. And finally, the need for greater agility, transforming to capture benefits of a hybrid cloud. So we can move to the next slide. So our aim with the new IBM Z16 and the ecosystem of software and tools surrounding it from SUSE and others is to provide technology and tools to help you accelerate your digital transformation and address these questions. So IBM Z16 is built to accelerate decision velocity. So speed up how we can make decisions with its new Telem processor, which I'll talk about in a moment, which includes the industry's first on-chip AI accelerator. Secondly, IBM Z16 is built to deliver unmatched security and cyber resiliency with quantum safe cryptography. And that's to protect your business today, but also into the future. And that's in addition to a whole host of security capabilities, which are already in the Z16 and which SUSE has been exploiting. And finally, IBM Z16 is built for the hybrid cloud with a broad set of open and industry standard tools, including an agile DevOps methodology to accelerate application modernization. So if we can move to the next slide, let's just spend a minute or two on one of the things that powers this incredible innovation. Last year, we announced the IBM Telem processor. It's the first time for a long time we've actually given a name to the processor inside the IBM Z systems. But the Telem processor is a fully redesigned microprocessor and it's the core part of the IBM Z systems and Linux One systems. In the past, we've had other accelerators, for example, in terms of 100% uh, encryption, data compression, things like that. And IBM Telem adds a dedicated on-chip accelerator for AI inference. And this enables real-time AI embedded directly in transaction workloads. What does that mean? Well, in the past, you would be able to use AI to tell you that a fraud had occurred. 
So a bank could say, okay, we think that's been a fraud here, it's been flagged up, let's do something about it and see whether we can recover. With the on-chip AI acceleration, you can do that whilst the transaction is happening. So if you feel that the uh, transaction is, uh, is not sound, you can stop the transaction. And this obviously changes the whole game in terms of uh, using AI uh, to protect systems. If you look at the, uh, the processor, you'll see there's eight sort of square type things. That's each of the, uh, the cores. And then bottom left by, is where the AI accelerator is. So it's actually on the chip. It's not a, sort of attached by PCI or anything like that. This is actually on the chip. And IBM Z16 has up to 32 of these chips, which gives you an idea in terms of the scale that it can do. Now, in today's digital economy, data offers tremendous opportunities for harvesting value. But extracting that insight is quite elusive. Now, running deep learning models on high volume transactional data is difficult to, to really to attain if you're dealing with off-platform inferencing solutions because things like latency, variability, and security can make it impractical to do this. So if you really want to prevent fraud in real time or provide expert personalized advice, you need to have the in-transaction inference in real time scale on the chip. So now let me hand over to Mike to talk about SUSE software support for the IBM Z16. Thanks, Adam. So um, almost every product from SUSE is supported on IBM Z and Linux One systems. It's not my intent to explain every product listed um, on this slide in great detail. Rather, uh, what I've done is provide links to the different SUSE concessions for each product that is listed. And I encourage you to watch these sessions during SUSECon. But let me take a moment uh, to highlight a few of the listed items. The SUSE Linux Enterprise section and the SUSE Manager section are part of business critical Linux at SUSE. The combination of IBM Z and Linux One with these SUSE products make the best infrastructure where business critical applications will run. SLES 15 SP3 and 12 SP5 have support for Z16 at general availability. SLES 15 SP4, when released, will be compiled with optimizations for Z16, which include the Telem processor features and other updated Z16 components. SUSE Linux Enterprise Micro, or SLE Micro as we call it, is part of the edge focus at SUSE. Now you may be asking yourself, how does a mainframe fit into edge? Well, edge produces and consumes a lot of data, critical data. IBM Z and Linux One is the best platform to securely host data that is rich to a business, which may include critical customer information. SLE Micro is a secure, immutable operating system that can run as a KVM virtualization host or as a container host. Combining IBM Z and Linux One capabilities like pervasive, uh, pervasive disk encryption for data at rest security and secure execution for confidential computing uh, um, that, are, that are enabled within SLES and SLE Micro helps protect the data at the core and to the edge. The products under SUSE Rancher are part of the enterprise container management focus. These products are available for IBM Z and Linux One since June 1 of this year. Customers have choice with Rancher products, which, which is an industry recognized leading technology for deploying and managing container orchestrated applications. An important thing to note is that SUSE Rancher products are supported on any enterprise Linux, which is supported on IBM Z and Linux One systems. I encourage you to check out a cust 1137, where you can learn more about SUSE Rancher for S390X. Adam, back to you. Thanks, Mike. So now let's dig down a bit deeper on our use of AI. 
how to speed decision making by a combination of lightning fast prediction and widespread automation. So we can move to the next slide, please. So as businesses look for ways to leverage AI across their business as they digitally transform, many consider real-time insights to be a critical factor in achieving their top initiatives. Real-time insights are derived by executing AI models using real-time data within an in-flight business transaction or operational process. As an example, real-time insights are key to detecting and preventing fraud before it occurs. But almost half of businesses have challenges getting insights where and when they're needed. This is often the result of an architecture where AI is performed on a different platform than the transaction workloads using copies of the data. The network and data latency inherited in this architecture impacts the ability to deliver real-time insights at scale. So with the Z16, as we've said, we've now got the on-chip uh, AI inferencing capability. So here's three use cases. Firstly, this is a potential of protecting fraud before it happens or as it happens by scoring up to 100% of transactions in real time, obviously of interest to banks, insurance companies, governments, healthcare, and so on. Secondly, it's personalizing the customer interactions. So because the AI is located on the chip along with the sort of uh, data, you're able to do things whilst the customer is interacting on every stage of their interaction. And so you're leveraging the speed of AI and the lack of latency in order to be able to personalize and tailor the response to the customer. And the third is really to do with operations. And as uh, we've gone on in terms of digital transformation, uh, systems have gotten more complex and in realistically, in terms of managing the systems, you need automation, but you need automation with intelligence to be able to analyze and learn from what happens in terms of the processes and identify and resolve outages before they happen. So if you can move to the next slide, please. And here's how we do it with an integrated AI accelerator designed to provide extremely high performance and consistent low latency inferencing for processing a mix of traditional transactional and AI workloads at speed and scale. We can support up to 300 billion inference requests per day. That's a lot of AI with a consistent one millisecond latency. And that consistent latency means that you can do the AI within the transaction. With this on-chip AI accelerator, complex AI inferencing and leveraging real-time data can be integrated into your transactional workloads and deliver the insights you need for 100% of your transactions while still meeting the most stringent SLAs. That's the game changer. Co-locating transactions, data and AI inferencing on IBM Z16, we think it will enable businesses to get the most accurate insights when and where they're needed. And another key element of this decision velocity is acceleration of building, training, and deploying AI models into production. Our strategy is to enable data scientists to build and train models on any platform, including, but not limited to Z16 and Linux One, using the model development tools and popular frameworks that are used across their enterprises, such as TensorFlow and PyTorch without requiring IBM Z system skills, and then actually run the model on IBM Z16. So now back to Mike to talk about SUSE's support for AI on the IBM Z16. Thanks, Adam. So uh, SUSE's support for AI capabilities on the IBM Z16 is a work in progress. We've been focused on core library support in SLES for packages like NumPy, OpenBloss, and Onyx, which are needed to run AI application and frameworks, which Adam just mentioned, like PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Anaconda. I've been part of uh, calls between SUSE and IBM Z developers where um, building the core libraries are being discussed. To build these core libraries with Z16 optimizations, 
requires the compiling with a newer GCC compiler like GCC 10 or GCC 11. Uh, the first package uh, with the Z16 optimizations is OpenBloss 0.3.20, which has been built um, and is, is, uh, will be available with 15SP4. Um, as additional core libraries are built with Z16 optimizations, SUSE and IBM Z will work together to analyze customer consumption of AI applications and frameworks. The goal is to streamline the packaging and delivery of these applications and frameworks so that customers can take advantage of them on the Z16 um, system. So I hope to be able to present more detailed information about SUSE's support of AI capabilities with Z16 and future IBM systems at the next SUSEcon. Adam, back to you. Thanks, Mike. So turning now to our second theme, how does IBM Z16 protect its valuable data, both today and tomorrow? So if you can move to the next slide, please. IBM Z16 delivers new innovations in cyber resilience to help you, firstly, to meet compliance needs with proactive avoidance of planned and unplanned outages, and also to reduce the audit preparation time for selected controls through increased productivity of compliance resources. Secondly, by protecting data at rest, data in motion, and especially now data in use in terms of confidential computing and Linux secure execution, which Mike will talk more about. And thirdly, protecting today's data from a harvest now decrypt later attacks with quantum safe data protection now and into the future. Let's dig a bit down now into quantum safe cryptography, as it may be new to many of you. So quantum computers, you may have heard about, it's one of the hot topics at the moment. It provide, they provide a completely new way to approach computing, leveraging the weird and wonderful world of quantum mechanics. They're advancing at a rapid rate and are now emerging from resource, research into production. Because of the way they work, quantum computers can solve some previously unsolvable classical problems at exponential speed. This is good news in most cases, enabling you to model molecules, discover new drugs, work out the best path to go. But there's one area where it presents a challenge, and that's for public key cryptography, which is obviously in fairly common usage across the internet. Public key cryptography depends on it taking millions of years to work out prime number factorization. Okay? So with classical computers, you could say, well, by the time uh, you sort of solve the problem, nobody would be around in order to sort of read it. But when you do this particular problem of prime number factorization on a quantum computer, this is possible much faster speed. And this is because quantum computers can tackle some of these things exponentially rather than linearly. So as co quantum computers get more and more powerful, okay, there will come a time, maybe it's five years time, maybe it's 10 years time, when quantum computers will be able to crack public key cryptography. And obviously by that stage, we need to have uh, new algorithms for cryptography to use in public key that aren't susceptible to quantum computers. But it's not quite as simple as that, okay? Uh, because what bad actors could do is harvest the data existing today, store it for five to 10 years until quantum computers are powerful enough, and then at stage decrypt it. And some of this information has a much longer lifetime than uh, five years. Think of social security numbers. Think of medical records. So there are things like that that are really important to protect. And so what you really need to do is to decrypt the data held at the moment and re-encrypt it with quantum safe uh, approaches um, so that it's safe for the future. So if we can move on to the next slide. 
The IBM C16 is the first system that's protected by quantum safe technology across multiple layers of firmware. This means that as the C16 boots, right, it uses quantum safe protocols in terms of that boots uh, approach so that it, it can't be interfered with. And that protects you against quantum attacks out of the box. Secondly, in terms of the data, as we've said, it's susceptible to a harvest now, decrypt later scheme. Securing and preventing this cryptography needs to be an a integral part of your digital transformation. And there's a lot of work been done by the industry and by the NIST, the National Institutes for Standards and Technologies, in terms of replacement algorithms such as crypt, uh, lattice uh, cryptography that are quantum safe. And what we've done is we've included these onto IBM C16, so you can actually then use these for encrypting today's data and for re-encrypting existing data that you want protected into tomorrow. And even before you start on implementing quantum safe cryptography, you need to discover where and what crypto is being used in your applications and to develop a crypto inventory for migration and modernization. So that's what we're doing around quantum safe cryptography. Now let me hand back to Mike to talk about some other areas of security with SUSE on IBM C16. Thanks, Adam. Well, we all know security is critical, especially in today's world. Uh, SUSE is committed to delivering best effort security to our customers and to the open source community. SUSE and IBM work very closely on many security related aspects, which are highlighted on this slide. You can hear Adam and I talk about confidential computing with SLES on IBM Z and Linux One Systems in TUT 1126. I encourage you to watch uh, this session if you want to learn more about encryption for data in flight, data at rest, and data in use. Beyond SLES taking advantage of the IBM Z hardware capabilities, SUSE and IBM collaborate on security uh, around certifications, validations, accreditations, and, and documentation. This includes common criteria EAL4 plus certification, FIPS validation, as well as SCAP and STIG implementation and technical documentation. SUSE goes one step further by developing functionality like CVE audit in SUSE Manager that simplifies determining if your system is impacted by a CVE. We also have published the SLES hardening guide as a recipe for organizations running SLES on any architecture within their data center or the public cloud. Adam, back to you. Thanks, Mike. So finally, let's look, take a look at modern existing applications with the hybrid cloud. Okay, if you can move to the next slide, please. So IBM Z16 helps accelerate modernization and integrates in, into a hybrid cloud environment. Here's the uses. Firstly, helping developers develop applications using familiar tools and existing skill sets. So you don't need special skills for the IBM Z16. Secondly, and this is the core of hybrid cloud, is around delivering business value faster with new and modernized services which integrate applications and data across the hybrid cloud. So you can run the applications anywhere. And then complementing that is optimizing deployment of those workloads on the best fit resources across the hybrid cloud, from core to cloud to edge. So gaining efficiencies and linking cost to value. So over again to Mike to talk about SUSE's hybrid cloud activities on IBM Z systems. Thanks, Adam. Well, we've been busy on collaborating on hybrid cloud. Uh, a key focus has been uh, focusing on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server on S390X architecture in IBM Cloud. Today, a virtual server image of SLES 15 SP2 for S390X is available and, and you, can, you can see the screenshot on the right that shows uh, this. Newer versions of SLES are coming soon 
as virtual server images, as well as for bare metal, also known as LPAR deployments in IBM Cloud. We have deployed SUSE Rancher products on SLES on S390X in IBM Cloud. This allowed us to show the complete SUSE stack running on IBM Cloud for customers that are asking for this. The ultimate goal is to offer SUSE Linux Enterprise Server and SUSE Rancher as options uh, with an IBM Cloud uh, for the IBM Cloud HyperProtect virtual server offering, which provides confidential computing within the public cloud, IBM Cloud. Even though our focus has been mostly on public cloud uh, over the last year, I want to call out uh, that we are working uh, also within the private cloud using IBM Z and, and Linux One. SUSE is using IBM Cloud Infrastructure Center as a self-service provisioning tool for any SUSE employee to get access to IBM Z resources. Some of our engineers are using the Terraform capabilities within IBM Cloud Infrastructure Center for infrastructure as a service automation for development and testing. I want to thank IBM Z for allowing SUSE to use this product as part of our internal hybrid cloud development tool set. Adam? Thanks, Mike. So let's uh, summarize. We'll move to the next slide, please. So the new IBM Z C16 is a monster of a machine. Just look at the specs. More cores, up to 200. Next generation semiconductor technology at seven nanometers. More cache more memory. We've built it so that you can build the future of your business on an intelligent, cyber resilient hybrid cloud platform. And SUSE software running on IBM Z16 help makes that happen. So over to you, Mike, one final time. Please bring us home. All right. Thanks, Adam. Well, SUSE is super excited about IBM Z16 uh, um, release and general availability. Um, um, you know, IBM Z16 with SUSE products deliver um, innovative, te innovative technology that our joint customers can use for their digital transformation and to unlock new opportunities. We know that the speed of business is accelerating. Making decisions in real time means having insights on real time data in every transaction all of the time. Z16 with the Telem processor and the on chip AI accelerator help businesses reduce risk by detecting fraud in every transaction, speeding up credit approval processing for consumer loans, analyzing medical images for better patient outcomes, and, and, and many, many more things. So SUSE is very focused on how our joint customers can use SUSE products on IBM Z16 for AI at, the, at speed and scale. You know, the world is constantly changing. Uh, new opportunities come with, with new risks that are occurring almost daily. Security is top of mind for most businesses today. Improving that cyber resiliency and driving down the cost of security compliance are, are common goals that SUSE and IBM Z focus on uh, through product capabilities, certifications, validations, and documentation. And lastly, SUSE is excited that IBM Z continues to improve cloud capabilities on the platform for both on-premises as well as public cloud customers. Our joint efforts will continue to focus so that customers can use SUSE products and IBM Z and Linux One systems anywhere at the speed of the cloud. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for listening to this presentation. Adam, it's been great presenting with you. Please feel free to reach out to us with any questions. Thank you. Thank you.